Star Wars, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Terminator, Batman. These are all iconic franchises in the world of cinema. However, they're all pale in comparison to the greatest film franchise of all time, High School Musical. Three iconic films, a collection of the most iconic songs ever created, and a legacy that can never be tarnished. Even if Zac Efron doesn't remember the names of the songs. Oh, the name of the song? Okay, oh man, Precious Soar and Flying, isn't it? No, come on, Zac! With the legacy that could never be tarnished, many people grew worrisome after the announcement of High School Musical, the musical, the series. How dare Disney mess with our childhoods? Nothing could ever hold up to the original movies. There is no way that this show could be good. However, we were all incredibly wrong. High School Musical, the musical, the series does hold up. The music slaps. The story is unique. There is so much to love about this show. Instead of being a direct copycat of the original movies, this series pretty much just pays homage to those original movies and it does it very, very well. This show is about the kids who go to the actual East High School where the High School Musical films took place and it documents their lives as they put together a production of High School Musical, the musical as their school play. This is where we learn immediately that this show honestly doesn't have much similarity to High School Musical besides the fact that there is some of the High School Musical music and also that there's just songs in general. This series honestly is a lot more similar to shows like The Office or Parks and Recreation. Sure, they may have some of the bangery bangers like Stick to the Status Quo and Get Your Head in the Game, but it is not a High School Musical series. It is a show with a subplot that has to do with High School Musical. The show begins at the new school year where we find out that Ricky and Nini, who are the main characters of this series, were at one point a couple. Nini wrote him this really cute song where she told him that she loved him, however, they broke up over the summer because of this little incident that took place right afterwards. Maybe we should just, like, chill for a minute. You know, like, take, take a temporary pause. Ricky, what in the blue hell are you doing? You've been dating this girl for a year and you can't tell her that you love her? Bruh! L listen though, even if you couldn't say it, you probably could have at least tried to be a little smoother with it so that it didn't come off like a dick move. But you know what? You kind of came off like a dick here. Which kind of leads to the events that happen afterwards. Anyways, we learn that Nini is now dating EJ and Ricky gets super jealous, auditions for the High School Musical musical so he can try and win Nini back, and pretty much just throughout the first episode, we learn that neither of the two characters are in the wrong or the right. Uh, let me explain. With Nini, she was pretty much heartbroken after what happened with Ricky, so it isn't really like she did anything wrong because at that point they were technically broken up and she was going to a theater camp. It was very likely that she could have met someone else, but she wasn't really seeking it out. It just kind of happened and sh sh they pretty much were broken up at that point. So she so she started dating the senior. Uh, but on the other hand, Ricky, he did say it was just gonna be a break. He knew that he wanted to get back together with her at the beginning of the school year and he pretty much told her that. So like, I feel like he, she could have given Ricky at least a little bit of a heads up, but other than that, she really didn't do anything wrong. And then on Ricky's side, which like, you know, if you haven't seen the series at all yet, you might be like, how are you going to defend Ricky? Well, Ricky is actually having at home trouble with his parents. Uh, they're pretty, his parents are pretty much getting a divorce. Or it's like, you know, ugh, that's pretty, that's pretty messy, but you can kind of empathize with him in a way because his parents can't even tell each other that they love each other, but you, we have to expect Ricky to be able to easily tell someone that he loves her. Like, I feel like from that perspective, you can understand why he wasn't able to say it. He did kind of just freak out that night in Nini's room, 
was he in did he do the right thing that night no but like you can understand why he did it a little bit more after seeing that ej and nini are planning on auditioning for the roles of troy and gabriella which makes ricky decide that he is going to audition for troy so that he can try and impress nini to get her back at the audition we meet gina who is a transfer student who immediately has beef with nini because of the fact that they're both auditioning for gabriella Nini, EJ, and Gina all audition for their desired roles, but Ricky is late to the audition. Too late? Am I too late? We're all set on Troy's. We're low on Chad's. You can read after the Gabriella's. I, I, I only studied the Troy scenes in the movie. Troy would have arrived on time. I called for the pair's audition, and you didn't respond. Free period is now over. They'll be here. The theater, as I have often pointed out, waits for no one. Sorry I'm late. Give me two more minutes. You're crazy, Wildcat. I'm so late. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Fulton. Been driving all night. I'll try to make it for the second act. Break a leg. Carlos, you're right. Troy would definitely not be late. Anyways, at the audition, Ricky sings the same song that Nini sang to him on the night that they broke up, and we find out that Troy and Gabriella will be played by Ricky and Nini, and Chan and Taylor would be played by EJ and Gina, who would also be the understudies for Ricky and Nini. I know I kind of mentioned this earlier, but the high school musical part of this series is not as much in the forefront as I'm sure that people would assume because of the name. It is seriously just kind of a side plot, like it's just kind of happening while everything else is going on around them. Obviously, if you've seen anything, um, there are like songs from the original movie. It's kind of like half original songs and then half songs from the movies. But honestly, the High School Musical stuff is kind of not that much, that not very important to the series. The show's main focus is actually the relationship between Ricky and Nini. From their breakup over the summer, to Ricky realizing his true feelings, to Nini breaking up with her new boyfriend, to Ricky becoming flirty with Gina, to Nini and Ricky's relationship becoming stronger, to Ricky finally having the courage to say the three words he was scared to tell Nini over the summer. It was a beautiful thing to watch. I loved this relationship. It was beautiful. If you watch the series and you hate their relationship, screw you, it was great. Like, look at this shot of Ricky and Nini during the auditions, and then look at the shot of them during the final performance. Their relationship has finally come full circle. And then they kiss for like 10 minutes long. Like, this is kind of risque for a Disney Channel show. I'm not gonna lie, wait, it's not really Disney Channel, it's Disney Plus, so I guess it doesn't count as Disney Channel, so they're allowed to be a little bit more risque, because I also, I remember at one point, Gina says the word hell. Some wonder studies we are, huh? Hell yeah, we are. And if you don't know, hell is one of those words that you cannot say on the Disney Channel. The show is songs about relationships, regret, being yourself, living in the moment, and EJ stealing Nini's phone. With some of the bangers that came out of the original films, this show had to do a lot to live up to them, and I think they definitely succeeded. If you were a fan of the music in the first three High School Musical films, you will definitely enjoy the music in the series. Except for maybe a billion sorries, but in their defense, that song was supposed to be bad. And it works very well for the plot of that episode. But as a song, no, you'll hate it. I don't like the song, but you know what, for the episode, like, in context of that episode, it was beautiful. However, with the exception of that song, there are so many in this series to love. I think I kind of you know. Wondering, Born to be Brave, Role of a Lifetime, Just for a Moment, All I Want, all of them are bangers. The show also features remakes of the original High School Musical songs, and although most of them are obviously not gonna hold up to the original versions, some of them like stick to the status quo are about as good as the original version, and then there's also some that are even better than the original version, like When There Was Me and You. So unfortunately, I do not have time to talk about all 10 episodes in their entirety, because then this video would be about five hours long. If you want to ask me questions on what I thought of specific stuff, if I don't talk about it, you can leave a comment below and I will uh, dive into a little bit of detail in the comments. But I'm only going to pick a few things that I really liked that I'm going to talk about. I'll also talk about a few things that I really didn't like, and that will be pretty much it. The first thing I really liked was the love triangle between EJ, Ricky, and Nini, and also just EJ's character overall. I know it's probably gonna be cliche for people who like the series that they think that the Ricky, Nini, EJ stuff is probably the best part of the series, but it seriously is just one of the best parts of the series. If the main part of the plot is lacking 
it will just bring the entire show down, so I'm glad that the main plot is working very well in this show. As characters, all three of them are just great. Throughout the entire series, we are shown that Ricky and Nini are the perfect couple for each other, and the chemistry that they have between one another pretty much just validates that. Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett were great in these roles, and it's honestly shocking to me that Olivia was on Bizarre Vark, which, if you don't know, is Jake Paul's Disney Channel show. Disney Channel flow. And also, EJ was the perfect foil for Ricky, and honestly was probably one of the best characters in the show. A lot of people didn't like EJ, but quite frankly, that's what his character was supposed to be. He was supposed to be the person that we saw that was not perfect for Nini, and Ricky was supposed to be the person that we saw that was perfect for Nini. But also, if you think about it, EJ was never really guilty of doing a lot of bad things. The only two things he's really guilty of is stealing Nini's phone, which yeah, is pretty, pretty messed up, and also writing a bad song. Other than that, EJ probably has the biggest arc in the entire show. From being the unlikable boyfriend of Nini, to being the person who pretty much saves the day at the end by letting Ricky sing with Nini because he knows that that's what she wants and that's pretty much just what he wanted to do the entire show. He just wanted Nini to be happy and he knew that letting Ricky sing with Nini would make her happy and also he saved the day in another way because he bought a plane ticket for Gina who was forced to move away earlier in the season. Anyways, the love triangle was interesting to watch because we saw Ricky and EJ do whatever they can to make Nini happy, whether they ended up doing the right or the wrong thing, but they always did it to make Nini happy. And pretty much by the end of it, Ricky and EJ, they don't really hate each other anymore. I don't know if they're friends technically, but you pretty much see an evolution in their like relationship, friendship, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Cause like they go from hating each other to like, I don't know if they like each other at the end, but like they like, they understand each other at the end. I don't know exactly how their friendship turned out, so I'm not gonna like say like, hey, they're like best friends now because like, you know, EJ used to be with Ricky's uh, ex-girlfriend and now Ricky's back with that girl. So they're best friends now. Cause like that, it, it doesn't work like that. Second thing that I really liked was Big Red. Big Red wasn't that deep of a character. If he was the forefront of the show, I don't think I would enjoy it as much. But, as a comedic relief character, I loved him. One example of his comedic relief was during the table read. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of tension between Ricky, EJ, and Nini. And then, Big Red was asked to read the stage directions during the table read. And Big Red, we learn he doesn't know how to read. Like, this, this dude's in like, a junior in high school and he doesn't know how to read. Another example of when Big Red is comedic relief is when the performance is starting, Miss Jen tells him to turn down the lights, bring down the disco ball so the first scene can start, and then Big Red accidentally plays the national anthem because he doesn't know how to work the uh, control thing. Yeah, yeah uh, Big Red Big Red is a enjoyable character to watch. I loved watching him. He was my favorite character because of his comedic relief. I don't think he needs to be that deep of a character and I will get into something uh, regarding him in the uh, hatred part. The third thing that I really liked in this series was the evolution of Gina's character. So next to EJ, Gina had probably the best character evolution in the series. When we meet her, she comes off as the mean girl when she's trying anything possible to take Nini's role as Gabriella. However, she has a turning point at the homecoming dance when she went with EJ with the plan of making Nini jealous in hopes that she'd quit the musical. However, the plan doesn't really work out and she gets pissed at EJ and then she has a heart to heart moment with Ricky and this is the first time we realize that she's not really that mean, she's just misunderstood. But Gina and Nini eventually settle their differences and Gina becomes more enthusiastic about playing Taylor. Then at the Thanksgiving party she finds out that she has to move again but then on opening night she makes a triumphant return and plays Taylor in the show. The fourth thing I really liked was the Lucas Grabeel cameo. There's not really too much to say about this cameo because it only really took place in one scene, uh, besides the fact that I really liked watching this. It was pretty fun seeing Lucas Grabeel make a return to the high school musical world, kind of. This cameo, it wasn't just like one of those cameos where like they pop up and they're like, yeah, what's up? It was actually a cameo where like it's important to the story and it pushes the story forward. So that's why I really appreciate this cameo. The girl that plays Martha also made a cameo in one of the episodes. But hers, she was she was just kind of there. It wasn't like a cameo that was important to the story. It was just kind of like, hey, look, look who's here. Like nothing too important. 
Basically, Miss Jen said that Lucas was her favorite cast member when she was a part of the original High School Musical because he was the only one in the main cast who said she did a good job. She was really stressed that day and she fainted and after fainting, she sees Lucas in her dream and they sing a song about how Miss Jen shouldn't stress about Broadway roles and Tony Awards, but instead she needs to realize that her role as a, the drama teacher is very important to the kids and that it is, as the song says, the role of a lifetime. Then Miss Jen gets slapped to wake up. <laughs> and the last thing I'm going to like go in depth about uh, that I really liked was Ricky's at home drama. So I mentioned earlier that we can kind of empathize with Ricky because of his at-home life and like we shouldn't really give him that much crap for like not being able to tell Nini that he loves him. Uh, but also that wasn't just like a throwaway line, like they actually go in depth and they show what's going on in his home life. Real quick though, I would like to say that Ricky's mom, worst mom of the year. I, I, she's the worst. I hate Ricky's mom. Ricky's mom should not have come to the high school musical show. Ricky's mom is probably the worst mom in the world, probably. So first, she leaves Ricky and her dad for Chicago. Like, you know, like, she has to discover herself. You know what? Someday I will be able to forgive her for that. Then the minute she comes home, they tell Ricky that they're getting a divorce. You know, R Ricky has a lot of stress to go through after that. He was supposed to go to rehearsal that day and he ended up being late because of his home drama. Then on Thanksgiving, Ricky tries to call his mom who is back in Chicago. And do I know who picks up? If you haven't seen the show, do I I'll, I'll give you a few seconds. Do I know who picks up? Ricky's mom's boyfriend. Ricky's mom's boyfriend. She got a new boyfriend, didn't tell her son. Then on the day of the show, things look great when Ricky's mom shows up and she's very happy. She's smiling with her dad. They're hugging. Like, you know, yeah, they're there to support Ricky, but Duano shows up to this family friendly content musical. Todd. Todd, the boyfriend. Todd showed up to this musical. Screw you, Todd. Screw you, Ricky's mom. Ricky's dad. Dad of the decade. Dad of the year. Dad of the decade. Dad of the millennium. Ricky's dad, you rock. Ricky's mom, screw you. But in all seriousness though, this was probably one of the best parts of the show. Real quick, a few things that I want to list off that I did really like, but I don't really want to go in depth because this video will be like 10 hours long. Uh, the Carlos and Seb stuff, uh, the high school musical performance, and then uh, Seb's whimsical voice. Like, here, I'll play a little uh, bit of it so I don't get copyrighted, but I'll play a little bit so you guys can hear it. She's the one who cheers us up. Bam, you know that voice is whimsical. You know that voice is whimsical. You you cannot deny that. Things I didn't like. Number one, <laughs> the Big Red and Ashlyn romance. I love Big Red. I liked Ashlyn. But together, not really. Not really. Not really. Wasn't that good. So listen, if this show gave them a little bit more time to build this romance a little bit, maybe like give them a little bit of time to make us care about this romance then maybe i would feel a lot better about it maybe i wouldn't feel like it was as bad as i do but it just kind of happened out of nowhere like there was no build to it like big red and ashlyn they never talked before like the first time they talked uh which was the thanksgiving episode and like the th that's when we saw like sparks fly between them um but it just it just kind of came out of left field. It felt completely random. Maybe in season two, they will go into it a little bit more and I will appreciate it a little more. But right now, no, I really don't like it. Miss Jen and Ricky's dad romance. Okay, so listen, I said the last romance was random. But come on. <laughs> this one was more random. Like at least Big Red and Ashlyn, they went to the same school. They were both involved in the musical in some capacity. So it makes sense that, in a way, that it could happen. I'm not saying that the Big Red and Ashton romance was, like, unlikely to happen. I just said it felt out of nowhere, didn't expect it, and I didn't really care for it. I I didn't like the Miss Jen and Ricky's dad romance a little more. Like, sure, it did help um, uh, during uh, the, I guess, trial. Not, not really a trial. It was the school board, like, they were deciding whether to fire Miss Jen. Uh, Ricky's dad spoke up, and I guess if he never, like, went out, or he didn't really go out with her, it was just kind of like, they met in public, and, like, sparks kind of flew for a second. 
uh but like i guess like if he never felt that he would have um he wouldn't have stood up and then and supported miss jen in that situation but also it wasn't really that important to the story so like they didn't really have to do it. I'll be honest, I completely forgot it happened until they mentioned it again. Like, they mentioned it, like, a couple times. They, like, kind of showed it a couple times. But they didn't really make it a big deal, so I don't know why it happened in the first place. Who knows, maybe season two, uh, Miss Jen will become, uh, Ricky's stepmom. <laughs> so the next thing is the Miss Jen and Mr. Mazzaro romance. I don't know if this was technically a romance. It could have just been, like them understanding their differences but there were some times where it kind of felt like they were trying to push a romance between them uh i will say at like their arc where like they were like realizing each other's differences and like becoming like people who will work together more that i i liked i liked that but there was one episode it was the thanksgiving episode uh they were both at the school because like they didn't have anything to do and then they kind of like hung out they like fell asleep they napped together it was i'm not talking about sex i'm saying they fell asleep on the couch together they were napping they were watching a movie that's what i meant don't don't take it you perverts you perverts are gonna make it something that it's not not never said that they that they had sex but like that didn't really make sense like i understood like they were figuring out each other's differences they were becoming friends they didn't hate each other as much anymore but literally the week before the ep like the episode before this one, Mr. Mazzaro literally tried getting Miss Jen fired. And then one week later, they're like, I, I don't know if they were really cuddling, but they're cuddling on a couch. And then the last thing I really didn't like that much was the constant cast changes during the musical. Now listen, to the story, it makes sense why these changes occurred. Uh, Gino didn't come back yet uh, when the show started, so Courtney had to play Taylor. And then when Gina showed up, Gina took over. Ricky gave up the role to EJ, so then they had to find a replacement for uh, Chad, so that's why Carlos played him. But there were so many cast changes in the span of like two episodes. During the actual performance, like the actual performance was two episodes, and there were so many cast changes. If I was an audience member during this, I would have been so confused. And also, as a drama teacher, why is Miss Jen just, like, allowing this to happen? Like, she should be, like, up to date with what's going on in her show. If Gina doesn't show up, Gina doesn't participate. There should be no exceptions if we are looking from at this from a reality standpoint. But the cast keeps changing. Everyone's going to be confused because they're like, hey, wait, I, th I thought this other girl was playing Taylor. What, what, what's going on? Or like, hey, uh, I thought that guy was Chad. Why is he Troy now? Like, I'm so confused. Hey, wait, I thought that guy, th they keep changing it. Like, make up your goddamn mind. Who's going to play who? Like, listen, <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna keep complaining about that because that, that, that was really weird. But, like, it is what it is. Now, even with the small problems I mentioned, I may have gone into depth with them. I may have, like, been like, bro, I hated that. But even with those minor um, things I didn't like, I still think this show over-delivered from what a lot of people expect it to be. Like, everyone expected this to be, like, a really bad, like, copycat of High School Musical and, like, something that, like, would not be as good as the originals. But, honestly, it is probably about as good as the original movies. So a year ago, if anyone was asked if a High School Musical spinoff series would be good, I would be, assume that most people would say no. Maybe some people would say yes, but I think most people would say no. And I am so glad that they defied that expectation because as you guys know, Disney is pretty much known now to be making remakes of everything. Like even on Disney Plus, there's a Lady in the Tramp remake. Why? Why is there a Lady in the Tramp remake? But they're also remaking like the Lion King and all the princess movies. Like it's unnecessary. So I think when people heard that there was going to be a High School Musical series, they saw it like, oh, they're remaking the original movies. That's not good. I think that's why a lot of people were like nervous about it and like didn't want to accept that it was happening because they didn't want their childhood to be ruined from that. However, Disney decided to go the unconventional for them route of making something new and unique from an existing franchise, and I greatly appreciate that they did that. If you grew up with the High School Musical movies and you have not watched High School Musical the Musical the series, 
I 100% recommend that you watch the series. It is really good. You will enjoy it. Don't lie to yourself, you will. And also, if you haven't seen High School Musical or you just weren't a big fan of it back then, I'd say you could, should at least give the series a chance because it is enjoyable. I do feel like production wise it is definitely a lot better than the original movies i still think the second movie is iconic i think it's better than everything um but i do actually rank the series higher than the first and third movie but like i said if you are just looking for something fun to watch i definitely recommend this show i will say as of right now i am a bit nervous that there is going to be a season two because the show is called high school musical the musical the series and they already did High School Musical the Musical. They finished it. There's not really much that they could have done, but they did set up some stuff at the end, and I think I heard that they are going to be giving it a new name for season two, which is better. I don't want them to be having High School Musical the Musical the series and then having like Mary Poppins as the musical or The Lion King or like Les Miserables. That would just be random. Wouldn't wouldn't really appreciate that <laughs> but because of things that happened at the ending of the finale which i will not say in case you guys want to watch it i do want to leave at least something for you guys uh spoiler free even though i pretty much spoiled the whole, sh whole show in this episode the ending of season one did make me a little bit more optimistic for a season two so i will be watching that when it comes out i will be excited for it however as of right now i still think season one will definitely be better than the next season but we will have to wait and see. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up and subscribe, turn on notifications so you guys are notified whenever I post new videos. I know, again, I did a movie slash TV show review. I did one other one, which was Noel, which is another thing on Disney Plus. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed the movie reviews, please, if you want, leave suggestions down below for other shows or movies to review. And I will see you guys next time with a new video. Goodbye.